T-minus 30 seconds and counting. Beginning of a new era. ECS reduced for launch. Roger. For us meteorologists. Status check. Go Atlas. Go goes R. Five. Four. Night launches. Three. Now watch it go up. Two. One. And liftoff of NOAA's goes R. America's most advanced weather eye in the sky. My heart was pounding out of my chest. Elevating environmental intelligence to new heights and saving lives. Two decades ago, we never would have thought that as a storm was spinning up off the coast of Africa, that we would have some tantalizing clues. It would spin up to a Category 5 hurricane a week, 10 days in advance. But that's what we have seen. It was 10 plus years in the making. There's certain things that are really crucial with weather, and one of them is timeliness. If you gather information but you can't process it or understand what it is and how it can be utilized, you miss things. If you build into that satellite the ability to do rapid scans every 30 seconds over a rather large area, you can start seeing the evolution of these weather systems with a lot more fidelity. We started working with GOES-16 sometime around maybe 2005 is when we first started trying to figure out what information we would get from GOES-16 once it is eventually launched into space. When I first heard about GOES, um, I thought it was gonna be a game changer because of its geostationary location and its value for extreme events. This has opened up new knowledge for both meteorologists forecasting the weather and for those of us trying to understand it. We were making a quantum leap. We were making the biggest investment and improvement in the entire history of the GOES program. We've always had sort of some inkling that we could do what GOES could do, but we needed the technology. And this is a beautiful marriage of advanced technology and engineering and science. The goes our mission covers quite a spectrum of applications. We watch and help predict the severe weather, thunderstorms, the tornadoes, hail storms, fog for aviation, fire weather prediction, space weather forecast, solar events. This is all part of the mission of Gozar. The Weather Service and with NOAA's Satellite Division on the kind of next generation of technologies, there's kind of three areas where they wanted us to focus timeliness of the data. Can we do it faster and get it to the forecasters in a quicker time frame? Clarity. They wanted more clarity. The other thing that they wanted was the ability to see more insight into the storms. As we designed the uh, ABI, the Advanced Baseline Imager, we took into account those three aspects. I think we really hit it out of the park. We knew we would be able to see details of the weather that no one had ever seen before. It took many years working with industry to get that capability and, and the design just right to do what the scientists knew uh, could be done. The tropical storm force winds currently extend 220 miles. I think this summer would be a really good shakeout. I think it was more of a shakeout than they could have ever imagined. Gozar was still moving to its final position, and it hadn't been fully deemed operational as far as all the quality control testing that they wanted to do. Even though it was not operational, the data were being used in an operational sense. And it was amazing. Harvey underwent rapid intensification, and we saw that in the hours before it made landfall in southeast Texas. Better resolution, temporal, spatial, really being able to see the storm like we hadn't seen it before. When forecasting an extreme event, seconds, not minutes, not hours, literally seconds, can mean the difference between life or death. I definitely think that lives were saved because of GOES-16. Harvey blew up so quickly. I think without GOES-16, I think Harvey could have been much worse. 
Shortly after Go 16 had been launched, there was a uh, outbreak of wildfires in Oklahoma, and that data is initial and as preliminary as it was, was still being used by decision makers. These fires were uh, rapidly evolving, the winds were changing directions, and GO-16 proved invaluable for being able to know exactly where the fires were going and where to position and pre-position uh, firefighting. When you have something like a Harvey or an Irma or a Maria, imagine what it would have been if we couldn't have given those warnings. All this started during the engineering checkout phase and I don't recall that ever happening before. What GO-16 has brought to the table is a much more impressive ability in terms of the time resolution and seeing the almost continuous development of these storms. There, there's a few surprises. We're able to see further down into the atmosphere than we were previously. And we've seen some examples where we can now detect where thunderstorms are going to form before any clouds have formed at all. So it's completely clear skies, and we start to get an idea of where the storms will form, say, in the next two or three hours. And that's a new capability that we didn't necessarily anticipate from, from earlier. There are blogs and tweets and articles where meteorologists can't get enough of the data and the information. One of my first comments about GO-16 was that this system was going to redefine mesoscale meteorology for us. The full complement of instrument on, on GOES runs the gamut from observing severe storms to space weather on the sun. GOES is a sort of a, a foreshadow of where we see the field of Earth remote sensing going in the future. The team is incredibly diverse. We have major corporations who are actually building all the hardware pieces, not only government, but we have thousands of people through academia because a lot of scientists are out in the university system. Our students are using cutting edge data as they learn about meteorology in our atmosphere. They're not just learning about it in textbooks. They have their hands on the data using it in their weather briefings or using it in their master's thesis or doctoral dissertations. So we are in an era where we have immediate access to the data and we can use it both in an instructional capacity as well as a research capacity. What the organization sort of learned is we can do this. We can look and really assess what could be, develop the technology to make it happen. It may take many years, but it's possible. And sets you up for that next generation. Let's start working on it now. Let's look for the future. What is the potential out there? Let's start getting some excitement about what can be because we know we can get there because we've just done it once. The technology and the capabilities all come from people. It's really about the innovation that, that these people had and the vision that they could create this wonderful technology and make it work. And their vision has become reality.